Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees, and the New York Yankees are going to go with Alex Verdugo in game one, which is tonight against Kansas City Royals. Uh, so they're going to go with him in left field over Jason Dominguez. Uh, this is reported by Andy Martino of SNY. So this is obviously one of the more highly contested uh, conversations entering the postseason. And while I understand both sides of the argument, I also understand and ultimately agree with the idea that Alex Verdugo should get to start in left field, considering some of the defensive issues the Yankees have had uh, at various positions. Left field has been a position where the Yankees have struggled defensively for a while, uh, at really ever since uh, Brett Gardner retired. And while Alex Verdugo has not had a good year, and I don't really foresee him coming back, I wasn't really a fan of the performance he put out there. Uh, I felt like uh, the hustle issues were a real big concern to me. Uh, but the one thing that he does do very well is play defense. And the Yankees are going to need someone who can secure uh, batted balls in left field because the Kansas City Royals are one of the highest contact rate teams in all of baseball. The Kansas City Royals struck out under 20% of the time. They were third uh, in lowest strikeout rates in baseball this year. They were third in batted ball events per game. What is batted ball events per game? That just means how often you're putting the ball in play during a game. The Royals average a very high number of that. I think it was around 25, 26 batted balls a game. You need to have your best guys out there. You need to have your best defensive players ready to go, raring to go, and more than capable of doing a job and, and corralling these batted balls because the Royals are really scrappy. They're going to force contact. They'll chase out of zone to make sure that they put the ball in play. They do not like the idea of striking out. It's not what their game plan is. It's not in their uh, toolbox. The power ball uh, or the home runs are not necessarily in their toolbox. Either they're not saying they're incapable because they have Bobby Witt Jr., Salvador Perez, Vinny Pasquantino. Those guys can hit the ball at the yard. Uh, but the rest of their lineup, they don't have power depth. They're, the lineup is not full of guys who hit the ball out of the yard. The lineup is, is though, full of guys who can put bat on ball. And when you look at the Yankees not having Anthony Rizzo at first base, that hurts them. Anthony Rizzo was their best defensive first baseman. So that hurts them, right? Uh, you know, third base, I think Jazz has played a lot better defensively there. I'm confident with him there. Uh, shortstop Volpe, a great defensive shortstop. You feel confident there. But Gleyber Torres, second base, uh, you don't feel good about Gleyber Torres, second base. He's not a good defensive second baseman. That's like, that's not even a... That's not even this year thing. He's he's historically been a bad defensive second baseman. Uh, in the outfields, uh, you look at right field, Soto, not a great defensive right fielder. You look at center field, Judge, not a great defensive center fielder. And then you look at left field. And if you throw out Dominguez out there, you have three well below average outfielders to try to stop an offense that puts the ball in play. And, and that's not going to play. It's not going to play at Yankee Stadium. It's not going to work. It's, it's going to lead to a lot of bloops and dinks and dunks and those innings can kill you. So having Alex Verdugo out there, it helps you secure yourself a little more defensively, especially playing that position. That position is very difficult in Yankee Stadium. Left field is very, very tough at this ballpark. It's very tough in Kansas City as well. It's a very spacious outfield. We'll get to that in a little bit, though. But looking at how this affects the offense, Verdugo is not a good hitter. He's not. He has an 83 WRC plus this year. If you got, you know, 2023 or 2022 Alex Verdugo, he would be a much better force. Like it really is frustrating that he couldn't have the year he had uh, in 22 or 21 with the New York Yankees because 280, 332, 405, Yankees would take that in a heartbeat. Yankees would take that in a heartbeat. He would immediately be there. He'd be there. No questions asked starting left fielder. He would immediately help this offense. He'd be a big boost, but that has not been the player he's been this year. Uh, and it's super disappointing. It really is. So, um, I don't really know what the fix is for left field. Uh, they they don't have uh, a stable option out there. It's Verdugo or Dominguez. If you want to argue they should have traded for somebody at the deadline, that's fine. If you want to argue Grisham should have gotten reps in left field at the deadline, I would agree with that. Uh, not at the deadline, excuse me, during the year. I would agree with that. Uh, but that's not the case. That's not what ended up happening. So these are the two guys you have to go with. You have a, you're facing a team that puts the ball in play a lot. I understand going with the defensive-minded guy. This series is going to come down to pitching. Uh, the Royals have a great pitching staff. The Yankees don't have as good of a rotation, but I'd argue they have the better, have the better bullpen. Um, and, and ultimately, it, it really just comes down to defense. It does. It's going to come down to defense and pitching. Um, you know, these two teams, offensively, the Yankees outclass the Royals out offensively, but if the Yankees can't kick in into high gear offensively, they're going to need the pitchers to hold it down. Now, I understand, you know, the Yankees are built around offense, and when you're built around offense, you should be able to, you know, put up runs, and you should be able to, uh, I guess the, the, the best way to put it, you should be able to, um, you should be able to withstand or, or kind of, uh, stomach some un incredible or unremarkable pitching performances, but this team 
in the Royals, they pitch so well. The rotation is very good. They have Waka going game one. They have Reagans going game two. Lugo going game three. Singer is waiting in the wings as a long relief guy from their rotation. The bullpen, it's shortened now. They have a lot of guys there that can really throw hard and, and do a job. Uh, this is a very strong pitching staff in Kansas City. The Yankees are going to have to prove that they can beat this pitching staff after this their most recent matchup where they did not show that they could destroy the Kansas City Royals starting pitching. I know that they crushed their bullpen in one of those two victories in that three-game set. But in the other one, that bullpen shut the Yankees down. And that's because they were bringing out their A guys. They brought in Lucas Urkeg. They were bringing in Daniel Lynch. They were bringing in Chris Bubick. You know, they're bringing in Sam Long, like some dudes. These are guys who have performed very well in the regular season. All of their negative war relievers have been either cut or placed on the IL. So they do not have any of the any of the awful, just terrible, the guys who came in and blew games. They're just going with their main guns. They're top guys. They're dogs. On the Yankees' standpoint, from the Yankees' situation, excuse me, it's the same thing. They've got Holmes going, uh, but he's not going to be the closer. They've got Weaver going. He's going to close. Hamilton, Canley, uh, Cousins, they're all expected to pitch. Hill, he's expected to pitch. Uh, that being Tim Hill. Luis Hill or Clark Schmidt come out of the bullpen. That's your that's your that's your squad right there in the bullpen. Maybe they have to throw in a Mark Letter Jr. Maybe they have to throw in a Tim Mays. Maybe they have to throw in you know uh, a Marcus Stroman. Personally, I would go with MLJ or uh, Mesa over Stroman just because MLJ misses bats. Uh, Mesa catches ground balls and he's left-handed. And the Royals have an 84 WRC plus against left-handed pitching. Um, and Stroman doesn't really provide much value outside of being a long relief guy. But again, focusing on what the Yankees have right now, what the Yankees are doing in this game. They're trying to play matchups. They're just trying to play to the uh, to, to try to counter the strengths of the Kansas City Royals, who are a high contact team who will force contact. And from the Yankees standpoint, the offense is going to come from their main guys. Can Stanton do a job? Can Wells do a job? Can Judge do a job? Can Soto do a job? If those one of those four guys or, or Jazz, excuse me, Jazz is also part of that conversation. If one of those five guys can put the ball uh, in the seats, Yankees will be fine. If one of those five guys are they're they're able to launch home runs with relative consistency. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. And, and you have Glaber, who's not a big power hitter, but he's their, uh, you know, he sets the tempo. He, he's their leadoff guy. Uh, I, I just don't see a world where the New York Yankees, um, you know, can win this series without Judge and so one of Judge and Soto going and one of those complimentary bats going. It, it comes down to Judge. It comes down to Soto. It's not, if it came down to Jason Dominguez from the win this series, I'm sorry. They would be, f it, I'm sorry. Like, it, it's hard for me to sit here. And tell you uh, that the Yankees have a shot in a series uh, if they're not gonna, you know, if they don't have, if they don't have Judge and Soto going. So uh, that's that's the key to the offense. It's not Jason Dominguez, and it shouldn't be Jason Dominguez. If it is Jason Dominguez, then this roster is not going to get very far. It's going to come down to Judge and Soto uh, on the pitching side of the ball again. You know, you have Cole going today. You've got to win your Garrett Cole games because your Garrett Cole games are the only games where I would consider the Yankees to have the pitching advantage. Um, and then looking at the uh, Royals side of things again, the Royals, they just, the Royals, they just have so many good pitchers. They really do. So they have really, really good pitchers. And, um, and yeah, I just, I, I, I think the Yankees need to be able to play great defense to uh, hold down a Kansas City Royals offense that finished 20th in WRC plus to finish outside of the top 15 in offensive runs uh, per fan graphs that finished uh, out of the top. Uh, 15 in uh, OPS. So the Yankees are going to have to do a job uh, defensively and pitching wise, because if they do that, they'll be fine. They can, they can hit home runs. Yankees score four runs. They should win. Yankees score five runs. They should absolutely win, right? Like they, that's, that's the kind of game they should be playing, right? Four or five runs wins the game. That's, that's where they should be at. So I think Vertigo helps them to uh, play that style of baseball. I think that's the most sustainable way to try to win these games. If you're trying to win these games by letting the Royals get on the scoreboard and score a ton of runs, you're really opening yourself up for a disaster because that pitching staff is too lethal to do that. With that being said, though, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you for Alex Verdugo starting? Are you for Jason Mingus starting? Where's your logic there with the left field situation? Again, I subscribe to the theory of you got to prevent runs. The Royals will not be able the Royals will shut you down pitching wise they do not have the type of pitching where you look at them and you go all right just put runs on the board it's gonna put five six seven eight in netting that's not gonna happen not with these guys so you've got to prevent runs you got to limit damage you've got to squeeze their offense you're gonna make sure they're not getting anything out of that offense so that's really where I'm at with that again let me know what you guys think in the comment section below give me score predictions confidence all that stuff and with that being said you guys can check us out on Instagram TikTok Twitter Facebook and of course this YouTube page fire shakies is everywhere we're growing we, we love if you guys would join uh, us and, and, and continue to provide support. 
If you guys want to check out our written content, it's on empiresportsmedia.com. NFL season is here, so you guys should make sure to follow Fireside Bets. That's at Fireside Bets on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, and we also have a Discord page that you guys can subscribe to or, or join, uh, excuse me, and join our server, get some great bets. Uh, we're launching a couple of cool things in the uh, upcoming days. And with that being said, let's go Yankees, folks. Let's try to win game one. Let's try to make this a series. Let's, let's try to go out there and get the job done, go to the ALCS, and uh, – you know, hopefully let's 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 dance in October. Let's dance deep into the postseason. So thank you guys again for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Perfect.